Hello everybody and welcome back. I am KRX and we are finally doing another series here, this time looking at Banished. Why are we looking at Banished? It's literally almost a decade old. Well, because Banished is still fantastic. And we are going to be at least checking it out with some, some mods. We got the Mega Mod installed, which adds just tons of additional building options and um, just uh, content production chains and, and various things to, to do and, and strive for in the game and, and resources to juggle and, and, and sort of uh, gather. Um, and then this this mod right here just helps us with the UI. I can show that when we get into the game. Also with the Mega Mod, we get some additional starts. And I think yeah, Harsh is good. Um, we'll do we'll do just the generic map though. Actually, is there anything here that looks interesting? A lot of these are very thematically different. I think I think just the generic map will be good. But we'll do a Harsh climate, and we are going to do the Adam and Eve start. Okay, so this is just a two person start. It's not. In, in some ways, it's like thematically maybe harder than hard, but it's really kind of not because you only have two people that you need to take care of. Now, if you get unlucky, sometimes something, you know, they can just die uh, somehow doing doing a job or something. That's just bad luck, right? But usually you can get off the ground with these two people because they only require a small amount of food, firewood, and clothing, and you start with a small amount of firewood, you know, just like you always start with some of those basic resources, right? Let's uh, Let's get Janky Town up in here. And uh, and I'm kind of excited to uh, be able to talk a little bit about Banished and uh, just show it off because there's so many games that have been inspired by Banished and so few that have actually been able to capture the true tension and um, emotional uh, sort of feeling of, of playing this game. Let's pause for a second and look around. This is going to be basically a tutorial on how to get going. And the truth is, if you were playing Banished, you've never played before and you did just the normal start, it would be far more forgiving than what we're going to be doing now. So everything we're doing now is definitely going to apply for when you play Banished or if you've been struggling trying to get going with Banished. I will say that we are going to have... Um, so the one mod, the time mod, just has the time settings always exposed. This is all it does. It just shows these time, like the pause button and the play button and all this stuff. You don't have to dig it out of a menu. Usually you have to dig it out of a menu here, which is kind of annoying. I want these things always exposed. So that's all that does. The Mega Mod basically just adds tons of additional sort of customization and different building options. Like in the base game, you build a storage barn. But in this game, you could have this little small barn. Or you could have, you know, this little sh storage shack or, or this thing or this thing or, or, you know, whatever this is, right? It's just all it is is just additional buildings to build. And eventually there's more sort of advanced production chains and advanced resources are required for some of the some of the other uh, you know i mean there's like i mean this is saying that you can get like gold and silver and rough gemstones and stuff because the one thing is amazing as banished is in its original form the one thing it never really had was additional content like it it it, it, it came out it was a finished product it was great but there's really only like 15 to 20 buildings in the whole game i mean it's very basic it's very primitive but it does everything so so well and then modders have come and added on so much content to the game and that's essentially what we're playing with now. But the core of it is still the same beautiful foundation that was made by the original developer. Only one person actually somehow made this game, which is pretty impressive. Um, and of course, this is a survival game, right? You know, our people, let's uh, let's actually get some of the, we, we need to come into this uh, tool box and open up some of these things here so we can um, set up and have all of the info that we need to play and succeed at the game with the event log. And our resource uh, limits tab and our worker sort of management spreadsheet thing here but this is a survival game um, over here we have our starting resources right we have a hundred fuel which is like firewood that we can use to heat our homes because if our people don't have heat in their homes they freeze to death if they don't have homes they definitely freeze to death uh, it shows how many stored clothes we have if they run out of clothing they freeze to death and die um, <laughs> If they run out of tools, they can't work as efficiently, and then they tend not to be able to produce enough clothes, food, and fuel to survive, so they die. Um, and then obviously we have 250 units of food right now, which is going to be enough for two people, but for a little bit, for a little bit. Um, but it's not a very much, it's not certainly a very large stockpile of food, I'll tell you that much. And of course, if they run out of food, they die. So this is very much a survival game. We're going to be showing um, a little bit how to, uh, how to survive and banish. And right off the bat, we're going to come all the way over to this far right tab because this is how we're going to be able to do the extractions. And right now, 
we don't have anything that we're explicitly building. Uh, we don't have any resources to build anything with. So we have two labors. By default, anyone that is not assigned to a profession is a labor. And I believe if a person is assigned to a profession, but they have nothing to do, like if we make one of these people an adventure, I think they'll actually behave like a labor if there's no actual job for them, like no job slot for them to actually be an adventure, for example. But what we're going to do is as a labor, these people can come out and just gather the materials that exist in the, in the environment, essentially. And I don't think we want to gather any of the iron right now. It's a little bit more of a mid-game resource. I just want to gather the wood and the stone. The stone is critically important. So let's just create a little... So I'm just, I hit stone, and then now I'm going to do wood. And let's just get some of this wood here. And we definitely want to collect the wild foods. And there doesn't seem to be too many in this area. One there. But if there's little wild foods around like ginger root and berries and, 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 and other such things like that, we want to gather those things up. And they'll just bring the food back to the cart. But for the wood and the stone, we need a stockpile. So this is the storage section here. And these are just the sort of the raw resource stockpiles. A lot of this other stuff is for storing like foods and things. So where do we want to put a stockpile? This looks like a nice little place to do some actual building. So let's have the stockpile a little, a little more out of the way, I guess, in a more industrialized area. Um, doesn't need to be too big. Let's let's. Let's start with, let's start with this. Okay. And let's let it roll. So they're going to be gathering up some stone. And for housing, if we look at the housing, tons of different options here with the mod. But the base, one way to kind of know whether something's part of the base game or part of the mod is the base game stuff tends to be, this is not always the case, but but almost always, the base game stuff tends to be the, um, the sort of white icon, the uncolored icon. So in this case, the wooden house here is just a base game. This is a base game wooden house. R to rotate. F to get different variants. There's actually different variants to the building, which is really neat. So this is the wooden house. This would be a basic shelter for these people because they need shelter. It's telling us they need shelter. Now, it is early spring. It always starts in early spring. So winter is coming, but it's a few you know, months away. Um, and we have some time to get, to get going. All we really need to survive winter is a house. And, and, you know, a certain amount of food. The firewood, this should be enough firewood for, for, the, for the first winter. But the thing is, I, what I want to do is I want to actually bypass the wooden house, which is much cheaper to build. I want to bypass the wooden house and get these two Adam and Eve folk into a stone house, which is super high end to start off with. But the nice thing about having less people in the community is that, well... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build this, but I'm going to actually hit the pause button on it. There it is down there. Pause. And just because... Dirt road, stone rain. Let's just do a dirt road here. So we don't accidentally build over where the road would be. We're going we're gonna to lead with a stone house. Because we only have two people. We're going to let these people live it up. Um... And if we were trying to make stone houses for, you know, four, five, six families, that would be a little bit tough because just the sheer amount of stone, it'd be hundreds of stone to do that. And you might not actually start near that much stone. But since we only, we, we can kind of, we're going to be growing our population rather slowly. I want to make sure that these people are living in the best house. And what does that do for them? That means that they burn less fuel. They burn less fuel. That means that we need them. We have very little labor, right? Our, our labor force is very small. So any amount of time that people have to dedicate to making firewood, chopping firewood, that's time they could be spent doing other things. So by having a more fuel-efficient home, we're going to save on firewood quite a bit. So this is going to be worth it. And really, for the most part, they're kind of just doing their job here. It's saying we have low food. That's fine. It's just saying that. I mean, we have plenty of food for them. We're on speed 10 right now because really what these people are doing is they're just chopping things, chopping down trees, gathering stone. Um, we, we would like them to work on this stockpile, however. So, now they should remove this resource automatically because it's, it's the stockpiles here. Come on, guys. I'm going to actually let one of them become a builder and start working on building. Okay. 
I'm going to unpause this. The other thing, actually, there's a few things I think we're going to want to build. We're going to want to think about what is our initial food source. Now, for food, you can you can fish, you can grow crops. Now, I believe we should have started with at least one kind of crop. I doubt we started with any livestock with the Adam and Eve start. Does it tell us here? Uh, where actually would it tell us? Well, it might not tell us until we build the town hall. It would tell us if we actually built a uh, an orchard or a crop field. I'm just gonna I'm gonna do this real quick. Crop field. We might not have started off with crops. I kid you not. We might not have started off with crops. Or no, it's because we, it might be because we don't have a farmer. I'm not gonna worry. We're gonna worry that for now. I'm not gonna worry about it because we're not doing crops. You can totally do crops, but you really kind of want to start crops at the very beginning of the growing season. And we're already into early summer, and they're still kind of we're kind of a little bit behind the the eight ball here a little bit. Um, and I'm actually noticing the plot of area that we have uh, told them to uh, sort of clear out is a little too big. So let's actually pause here. Let's have them cancel. Let's cancel the gathering of all of this stuff. We got plenty of resources on the ground. We just need this stuff moving. We just need this stuff moving. But I am going to go back and still have them actually, you know what, if you are collecting something from the forest, make sure it's food. Make sure it's food. But I think now, hopefully, um, there should be a way to prioritize increase priority. Yeah, yeah. make sure you guys are working on this. Oh, the stockpile got completed over there. Good, so things should be moving the stockpile, and then it'll be organized from there. Food, though. Yeah, we can hunt. Uh, we can fish, we can gather uh, sort of like, you know, there's gathering huts to g gather stuff from the environment. There's, you know, apiaries for honey and so on and so forth. So there's a number of things that we can do, of course, livestock and, and, and orchards and, and crops and, and, and stuff. There's a number of things we can do for food. But what I like to start off with is, is hunting. Um, hunting gives us, this is the base game hunting cabin. It's a little bit big and kind of goofy looking. I think for the for the initial bit so i think what we're going to do is we're going to do one of the modded ones here it's a little cheaper a little sillier it only has uh it has less work capacity but since we have such a small workforce that doesn't matter that doesn't matter we're going to build this a little bit um off into the the boonies i guess and we're going to put this here be fair this is a little less important i'm going to pause this for now because it's just a little less important than the house the house is the most important thing but hunting is really nice because we get the leather from the from the deer that we hunt we get we'll also be hunting ducks and, and things like that i imagine but uh, the bulk of it will be a sort of venison and leather from the deer and the leather can be used to make clothing so you're really hitting two birds with one stone fishing is a very popular uh, way to get food and you can get quite a bit of food from fishing However, uh, you're not going to be getting other secondary materials that are also useful for survival like you are with hunting. Hunting is just a great first option. It's definitely not the highest just pure food yield, but uh, again, for only two people, we don't need to like really be maximizing the actual food production right now. Just a little bit of food will go a long way for these two. Getting a little bit of leather on the side is going to be very, very good. We are going to eventually need to take some of this firewood and make it into 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 fuel into firewood i say take the wood and make it into firewood that's what i meant to say um and to do that where is the okay here it is so this is the refined resources of firewood fuel and firewood being a refined resource so this is the default wood cutter area but we could actually go in with a, a smaller one um, and again this is actually the mod actually is a little bit yeah we might be doing adam and eve start that might sound kind of tough and stuff but the truth is the mod kind of gives you some of these smaller buildings to build and actually kind of makes it easier um, to get going if you want to uh, if you want to go that route. Besides, I, I like building the smaller hunting thing and the smaller woodcutter thing because the, the main woodcutter thing is just so massive. I mean, this is just silly. And just for such a small community of only two people, I don't think they need this. They can they can chop wood on a stump. That's fine. Um, but for the, the other buildings, I'm going to try, try to build the vanilla buildings just because I do think it is a little tougher. And they do look good, and they all kind of thematically uh, look like they belong together, so. But so far, this is going pretty good. We are still in, we're in mid-summer, so let's pick up the pace here. 
Okay, it looks like we are taking the stone that we have gathered up already. Plenty of stone. And we're moving it to this spot. Once we're done moving it to the spot, the building will commence. Since they're working on that first, I'm going to unpause the hunting hut. And and this is already the mini woodcutter isn't even paused as it added as it is. Okay, we are running out of apples though. So yeah. There we go. Foundation has been laid. The resources are here. Now we're just building, building, building. And it looks like by the time we get into aug uh, autumn, sorry, autumn, August, autumn, I guess similar, sort of we're in similar time period here, um, we will have our house built. And then from this house, they'll be able to move food from the cart. They'll move into this house. They can start to have kids. This is a critically important part of Banished, is that you can actually birth children in this game. So Adam and Eve here are a couple. Oh, look at all these deer here to hunt. Holy cow. There we go. France and Perius are, uh, are, um, I think it's a little goofy that you can't rename. This is like the one tiny little feature that every game since Banished has come out with, and they boast it like it's this, like, revolutionary thing. They're like, oh, you can name the villagers. Yes, it is cool to name the villagers. I wish you could name them in Banished, but you know what? Banished is still the better game, even if you can name villagers in some other game that came out 10 years later. Um, either way, we have our, our family here, and they're actually very, very young, as I guess would make sense for maybe this time period, right? Why were they banished from their home? Who knows? Who knows? They were kicked out of... The, they were both sort of, as teenagers, they were kicked out of their house, and, and uh, now they're living their own life, living their best life out here. Okay, so this is not, this is late autumn. It is not, let's go down to speed five because we are going into winter time now. Winter is here. And uh, we do, actually, we did gather some food from, our food has gone up a little bit. If we were to click on this, we'd see that there's onions, there's roots, root vegetables, various herbs, ginger. Oh, we got some wild seeds, blueberries, right? So we've gotten some things for just from gathering the in, in the environment. And if we had a gatherer's hut, we would actually be getting those things just sort of like passively. Where's our, where's our, why is this not getting built? I need a, just a little bit more wood here. Can we deliver that in one go, please? But for the most part, our people should be safe. They should be safe. They have a home. They have firewood in their home and they have food. They can be out in a blizzard and that's just fine. They have clothing, right? That That's where clothing kicks in so that they can actually go out and, and be productive in the winter time. I believe they're just as efficient in winter. It's just that they burn more fuel. They Their clothes wear out and, and such. Clothing is something we're going to have to work on, but but yep, they just see one of them just switched out their clothes. So we've already used a couple of clothes, pieces of clothing that we started with. So for clothing, of course, we need the leather and then we could think about uh, getting clothing. Once we can actually be producing food, firewood, food, sustainably producing firewood, food, clothing, and tools, then essentially this 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 community is, is effectively self-sufficient. Um, but as we get more workers, we'll be able to do more things, but then we'll have more need, there'll be more strain to get those resources. So, so you, you always want more people. You can never have enough people in this game. But, at the same time, having more people is just more mouths to feed. So it looks like we actually have a labor that's actually being lazy right now. It's interesting. Now they can actually become a become a hunter um, when that time. But and, until then, we could gather. We could start gathering a little bit of iron. I don't really love this iron here. Oh no, that's too much. That's too much. And then go ahead and maybe clear out the resources over here. You never have enough wood. Actually, where is our wood? Holy cow, where is our wood? Wait a second, wait a second. Where is our wood? How did we how did we have so little wood? Harvest trees.
Okay, now let's finish building this little mini woodcutter. What we could also do is get a little bit of additional storage. It's only 18% full. I mean, that, that card is working perfectly fine for us at the moment. So we don't have to worry about that. Let's finish. Do oh, this builder's done. So we are going to want to make more firewood, but I'm actually going to make that builder into a... Well, actually, I guess I switched the roles of the peeps. Oh, we've given birth. Look at our kid right here. Now, I believe they will not start working. They will not be a citizen that can be applied until uh, they're, I think, like 11 years old or something like that. They become an adult in this game. How are we doing on fuel? If we if we click on the building, we go to the inventory tab, we can see what's stored here. Plenty of food stored here. And here's an interesting thing. The food that is stored inside the house is not um, the food that is not is not the food that's counted down here. So this is 95 extra food above and beyond what they've actually shuffled into their home. We have 75 fuel in addition to the nine firewood that's still burning in the house. So we're doing okay. We've really only used, we've literally only used 11 of our fuel. Very little of our fuel has been used. And we should be able to make firewood pretty quickly overall, I would say. But guys, it is early spring right now of year two. We have survived our first year Adam and Eve style. We've got our stone house. We got food. We've got a, you know, we've got our child coming up here. This is it. This is it, guys. We've made it. We need to work on producing clothing. We need to work on producing um, tools to create that self-sufficiency that we were just talking about. Thanks, everybody, for being here. I'll see you guys in the next episode where we continue to survive and thrive in Banished.